welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. Thank you. Uh, I'm here with Brad Tandy. Let's let's um, start out at maybe a nonlinear point. You know, we you you just told me about a Costco experience you had. Can you right. recap that for me? Well, I'm sure a lot of people have seen different stories with all the uh, all the issues and coronavirus going around. So I thought, let me go to Costco, buy in bulk. The less time I spend leaving the house is the better. Um, and I ended up standing in line for a good hour, 15 minutes before getting in the place. Yeah. And I mean, they had everything done pretty well, which was good. Everything was organized. It was a proper line and they give you um, the shopping carts before you go in. But as we walked in, they had moved all the paper towels, toilet paper, uh, baby wipes to the front, thankfully, because I think they normally have it at the back. And yet to show ID, every, only person's allowed one. They fill up their cart and yeah, 98% of them just got their toilet paper and left. So I was there for food. Naturally, I didn't. I actually didn't buy any toilet paper or paper towels. I think I ended up getting bottles of water, which was also limited. Yeah. Walked around that. Walked around Costco. Empty, empty aisles. Absolutely tranquil shopping experience. I got all the food I needed. I was. It was. It was actually better, even though you know circumstances are not great. But yeah, everyone's got their their own little story about how how things have been going down and the things that they've seen. Yes. I don't think I've talked to anyone about this phenomena yet, but it, I mean, it is very relevant about how everyone's just freaking out over toilet paper and I just I don't understand it. Yeah. And, and, and I feel, I feel, I, I don't want to make too much fun of it cause maybe I'm completely missing something, but I don't think I am. Um, my girlfriend, she's a nurse. She's very, very involved and knows a lot about, you know, the pandemic that's going on and nobody does it say that, toilet paper is needed you know it's 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 a respiratory disease like maybe wiping your nose but like this is it's not going to be a <laughs> an issue but people seem to be going crazy over the white gold yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i don't understand it either and yeah not making fun of it i'm just i am confused at why that's kind of what people rush to first it seems right. when this started everyone was like toilet paper and, and i don't i don't know where it began Either I think I, I remember seeing a few funny memes and jokes about it, and I was like, "Oh, these, you know, people are just making, making some good fun, like having a bit of humor about it." And then I saw it in person, just people leaving the store one by one, just with their with their shopping cart, just toilet paper and baby wipes. I saw some people that had some cereal and water, and I was like, "Yeah, there we go. You're figuring <laughs> it out. Like, <laughs> you don't put anything in; it's not going to come out. What's the toilet paper for?" Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's wild because even. I feel like in the early stages, even now, you go to the grocery store and most of the stuff is there, but the toilet mm. paper shelves, empty. Just empty. Um, pasta as well, gone. Pasta is one of the other things yeah. that people, I think, went a bit crazy for. I couldn't find any when I was um, when I went to that, that Costco run. I had to go somewhere else and grab. But yeah, toilet paper, just a necessity in the time we're living in now. <laughs> I guess so, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so give me your account. Um, how, how have your last two weeks kind of been just in terms of this escalating to what it is today? Um, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a bit of like two sided. I feel like I'm living a different reality sometimes from other people. Uh, thankfully training at ASU, the pros there have been able to continue to train, uh, once a day for a select period. So besides training a little bit less, I've been able to stay in a, in a similar routine, obviously not going and seeing friends and going out and, and socializing. That's played a role, but I feel like when I get to the pool or when I'm preparing, you know, before going to work out or coming back from workout, I'm living a very different life compared to everyone else. Cause obviously I'm following the news and I'm seeing all the statistics about how, you know, the hospitals are getting filled and they're running out of supplies. And obviously, you know, as bad as people are losing their lives, which is, very very bad um yeah. my life has been somewhat affected but by no means could i complain in any way or say that it's in a in a worse situation because i know a lot of people whose loved ones and i mean i think i'm sure you just heard a few days ago cameron vanderberg came on and said he's been dealing with it and as a as a person who is very very much in the same boat as the rest of us in the swimming world he's a healthy like non-smoke great lungs individual and yeah. he said he was he was really under the weather and I was like really dealing with it and still is currently so that was a bit of a shock but as far as the worst of it I think I've been blessed enough not to see it and I mean you know touch on wood it, it stays that way um yeah yeah 
Yeah, and so, um, so you you mentioned that South Africa just went into a pretty a pretty big lockdown. Yeah, we had a uh, our president a few days ago say they're going to do uh, twenty one days, a three week lockdown. I think they brought in um, they brought in military just to really make sure that people because they they've they said lockdown in a few countries now, and you got you know seven thousand people squashed in at a beach or swimming around and not listening to the rules. I think they just shut down Manhattan Beach in California because, or Hermosa Beach, because um, people weren't listening. They, they, they had to kind of like take charge. So South Africa, three week lockdown, they're only allowed to leave for necessities, obviously food and any medical um, trips or what, what need be. And they're trying to tell civilians, listen, don't go panic buy. Don't go and buy as much food as you can on the shelves. The supply is going to be there. Don't stress out because that's, that's also a bad part of it. You have people that, that overreact, which by all means they, they can and should because of, of how crazy this pandemic is, but they go buy all the stock out of, of pasta, for example, and people that actually just need a meal for the next three days can't get anything. So they're trying to keep it as controlled as they can. And uh, we had a lot of uh, our South African consumers fly back for trials, obviously, which were meant to be held in <laughs> April about, 10 days from now and they have no access to pools. Everything's shut down. I have no access to gym as well. I think that's, that's a given. That's a pretty unhygienic place to be in at a time like this. Yeah. So yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of places, a lot of people are, are definitely being affected. I mean, I know my brother and my father and everyone's out of work right now. My dad is trying to, he manufactures like, um, textile like overalls so like chef wear like military wear like work wear kind of stuff and because of the shortages of all the medical equipment coming in he's trying to trying to see if he can help out and and thankfully is being able to help out to make more surgical masks and and equipment because the hospitals are running short really quickly yeah yeah no it's been it's been crazy um yeah what so when you found out, you know, you, you brought up your trials, when you found out that the trials were going to be postponed and then obviously the Olympics are now postponed, did you have an initial reaction to that? So, I mean, I kind of, we, we, we're really walking the race's edge. We had, a, we had a group of the South Africans that stay and train here in, in the U.S. and we we're kind of just counting down the hours and days until we finally got to work because we were messaging through to, you know, the head coaches and Graham Hill and trying to find out, okay, what – our trials on is it happening and we kept getting the response yes it's happening yes it's happening and it came down to about a week until most of us had our flights booked uh, i believe i was meant to fly on the 20th and on the 18th uh, our president had an address to the country saying that all uh, not all but but specific countries um they were banning flights and usa was one of them into the country which meant i had to change my flight that day to fly out the next morning in order to get to South Africa. And this was still when trials were, were go. Right. Um, and then once I landed in South Africa, I was, I had to do a two week quarantine just in case. So the situation then to me was, there's no point in me going back home. I thankfully at uh, Des Moines, I think it was a, yeah, it was a Grand Prix in Des Moines about a few weeks ago. I hmm. tied the qualifying time, literally went the exact qualifying time was, talking about getting getting it right and uh, so that counts for a qualification even though preference is at our trials uh -huh. so i kind of had a little bit of leverage to say guys listen i'm not going to fly home i'm not going to risk being on the plane and being around people in the airports then a two-week quarantine changing my flight and spending all the money i was like let me let me kind of sit back here i'm not going to come and then when they said it was finally cancelled relief i was like okay i made the right call i'm not because i'd Two of our friends, uh, Ryan could see one of them. He changed his flight. He said, I, I, oh, wow. yeah, I need to get home. I need to do the time. I need to be there. So he's now home and now dealing with the three week quarantine. He can't have, he doesn't have any access to a pool or gym. So mm -hmm. it's been, it's been a, a tricky decision, but you know, that was followed by the Olympic games being postponed, which I kind of, I don't want to say I saw happening because who, who knows what was going to actually happen with this entire pandemic. But once I saw, I mean, once I saw countries like Canada and Australia saying, Hey, we're not going to send any athletes. It kind of became of what kind of Olympic games would it be? Mm -hmm. You know, you, I mean, those are two countries with phenomenal swimmers, never mind the rest of the sports and everything else that they'll bring to the table. And that alone said to me, mm, no, 
yeah. it's not going to be a, an Olympic Games if you're going to have high tier, you know, athletes and and countries that aren't going to be going for safety reasons. Once that came out, I kind of I figured Olympics were going to be postponed. Eventually was, and I think again, relief to be honest. Um, I think it would have been too rushed. It would have been too chaotic. It wouldn't have been the the hype and the the the, the I'm trying to find the right word, the importance of what the Olympic Games were because there are going to be so many people that either weren't going to go or weren't as prepared. And that's what makes the Games is this bringing together of just the most elite and the most ready to to put on a performance. So I think it was a good decision. I've spoken to a lot of a lot of other athletes, obviously a lot of coaches and well, and I think everyone's pretty much on the same page where I think that's the right decision. Obviously, a little bit of remorse in, in most of them because we prepared to yeah. be ready then um and now it's like a whole nother year so you have to look at training schedules and 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 right now there's none because people are are stuck at home and obviously there's a financial thing to it making sure that you can go for another year and all of that that comes into it but ultimately i think the right decision and that gives me more time to prepare i've been dealing with a little bit of a lower back issue over the over the past few days so at least i get to bring down the training, focus on healing up the back, and then we can bring it back for the year leading up to 2021. Still weird to say. Yeah, yeah, right. Does that, um, does that kind of, a, you know, obviously you might not even have a plan yet. We don't, we don't know when anyone's trials are yet, um, or right. even officially when the games are yet. Uh, do you think you might, you know, go for, for more of a break, soon and then kind of get that full year to to go into it i think so i mean right now i just feel almost guilty if i didn't train because we have access to a pool and i know a lot of athletes that are you know shame sending their home workouts and are complaining that they haven't gotten in a pool in so long and are trying to make do and i have the option to train yeah. and then for me to take a break now i kind of feel like that's, 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 that's not the right thing to do. I should use the opportunity I've been giving, but at the same time, solely on just how my back has been feeling, maybe the best time to take some time off because when else am I going to be in the same situation as everyone else where the right thing to do is stay at home. Yeah. On top of that, I can heal up my back and I kind of push myself through. So I'm going to see how the next few days go. Um, Again, I do feel guilty if I don't go to training because I've been blessed enough to have a pool to go train at when so many other athletes are fighting to find some something to do, some sort of workout. So I don't know, I'm going to see how I'm going to see how it goes. I'll see how the back keeps feeling. If it starts healing up, then I'll just continue slowly staying in shape and getting workouts in. If it starts to worsen, um, I might step back for for a week and just say, let's make you know. So even playing field right now for everyone, I may as well use this time to to heal up and be smart. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yep. so what what is the uh the asu pro group like you know what is the day-to-day -day training with them been like for the past week or two uh so there's there's only six of us um kind of the sprint group uh run by herbie which is which is my new coach yeah. phenomenal uh phenomenal guy uh, so it's myself um Gran house and peyton and uh us three are kind of in the sprint group we train uh, 10 to 12 and the same time, uh, which is Bob's group, they're also training 10 to 12, Giles, um, Haley, and Allison. Okay. So they obviously two different workouts. I, I see what they do. I see how, how many <laughs> butterfly reps they're doing and that stuff for me. So they do their own thing. And every now and then Bob will come over and, and see what we're doing and keep things going. But we kind of have our own own schedule. What has been nice is obviously being able to sleep in, which is just great. Uh, we've been able to do long course because the college team isn't here, which they would generally be preparing for NCAAs, which I think, did the, the women start today? The, I think the, I think the, Someone's, guys, the guys might the guys have started, started today. yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I knew, I knew it was during this period. So we would have been short course yards the whole time, which as much as I enjoy yards, I need the long course training. So what's kind of been nice is we've had long course every single day, which has been good to kind of work that, that length. Um, but yeah, no, no gym workouts allowed. They, they shut down the gym, the whole campus is shut down. So it's very quiet, very empty. we do a bit of dry land training if, if need be, but our main, our main focus is the 10 to 12 every day, long course training. Um, it's going pretty hard because it's a single every day. 
we're not going to have a, a, a recovery like today. <laughs> today was a recovery day, but it didn't really feel like it. But um, which is good because we have we have the rest of the day to kind of relax, and I'm not going out and doing anything. I get to be at home, and I, I'm told to sit on the couch and stretch and hydrate. So yeah. I got to listen up, which is fine. Yeah, definitely. What just just because there's almost no swim workouts happening, um, you know, like I, I haven't eaten pancakes in weeks now. It's driving me crazy. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna ask about that. <laughs> Yeah. Is the craving being kicking in yet? <laughs> Seriously, it's like, well, I can't eat them unless I go to a practice. So this but is just total. You, you can't just you can't just pancake, and you can't just practice. You got to practice and pancake. There's, there's got to be a, it's got to be the duo. <laughs> so, um, what what was your recovery practice like today? What, what um, did you guys do? So we did a lot of um, kind of distance per stroke stuff, looking at length and catch with the arms by slowly taking away um equipment to help our legs so we started off just kind of with your with your normal kick so we had the legs behind us then you add a pull buoy and then you add a band to the to the leg so you're kind of slowly taking that away mm -hmm. and then within each set where you're removing equipment we'll go um both paddles then just the one paddle then just the left paddle and then no paddles at all to kind of feel where your body is on certain catches. Um, and with long course is good because you get really into your rhythm of your stroke to find out how your body's reacting without having, you know, the high hips with the, with the pool boy and then not having the kick behind you to help, you know, help you get the catch out in front. Yeah. So it, it a lot of body composition lining, trying to find out where we were. And then after every one of those sets, we were doing tempo work, which was four, 12 strokes on certain tempo. Mm -hmm. So we would see how far we went at that tempo. So we started at 0.7 uh, strokes. So each stroke you have to hit 0.7 mm -hmm. and see how far you went. Obviously try to remember where you were somewhere towards uh, the bottom of the pool. And then we would uh, increase the tempo. So 0.7 to 0.65 to 0.60 to 0.55. So our tempo started increasing okay. and the goal was to try to get as far as we could with the same tempo which meant we had to really use the legs and get the length and make sure that the catch was getting enough water so yeah. that's what today was yeah and then a bit of a kick burner at the end which isn't wasn't anything too crazy <laughs> nice. yeah so yeah, how, not too bad that's yeah so just with one with one single workout and then you've got the rest of the day to to be at home how have you been spending your time have you like picked up any new hobbies or just really <laughs> some of your old hobbies Oh no, I yeah, I've I haven't really struggled at finding stuff to do. I'm a huge uh gamer. I love I'm I'm a big nerd. I love my video games. So I've been gaming, uh streaming every now and then, even though that's it's not a big viewership. But yeah. yeah. Um a lot of video games. Obviously I try and not just sit here for six, seven hours. I'll take breaks and stretch and kinda get the back uh good. Binging a lot of series, watching a lot of a lot of series. That's that's a given. Going through a few movies that I said I, I definitely need to watch this. Oh, I haven't watched this. Let me go back and and, and see it. But yeah, yeah, just staying home, trying to stay healthy and helpful where I can if people need any any help. But yeah, just vegging. Dude, what have you been watching? Uh, oh man, I just started, <laughs> and I've seen a lot of memes about. It. I was like, what is this show about? Is the uh, King Tiger or Tiger King something like that? <laughs> I saw something about that, yeah. Oh, goodness. It is entertaining. And you think it's quite a, a bland story, first episode, and then you kind of realize that these people's lives are, go far beyond what you think it could be. It's it's very entertaining. <laughs> so I, I watched a bit of that yesterday. Um, what else am I watching? The new Westworld uh, episodes are coming out, so we're getting to catch up on that. Yeah. Um, I've watched The Office, I think, three times through, but I'm, I might watch it again. I'm such a fan of The Office. <laughs> uh yeah just just a few other things nothing too crazy i know there's a new documentary on i think they do one every year on the crossfit games i think oh, it's okay. called the fittest fittest human on earth or fittest humans on earth uh -huh. i think that just came out on netflix a few days ago i'm probably gonna watch that that's normally pretty inspiring you get to learn a lot i mean these guys and girls are crazy what they do just throwing weights around and <laughs> not for me I'll, I'll, I'll rip a shoulder out but it's, it's good to watch it's good to watch. <laughs> yeah yeah nice um yeah. well cool man any any closing thoughts you've got um not too much i think i mean i i i did a did an instagram post i think it's just you know it's more it's important i guess for everyone just to know that 
we're all in this together. It's not one versus the other, not a country versus the other. Everyone's in the same boat and we kind of need to, like I said, we need to know that the time that we're living in is going to be written in the history books. And I think it's important for all of us across all sports, all countries to look back at this time and know that we were, we were smart and we were safe and we were helpful. This is not a time to cause more issues than need be. Um, I know there's talk about, obviously there, there, there's always been talk about a cure or a vaccine or something coming out. And I think it's important for people to know that if there is a cure and hopefully there is that they find some way to control this, that does not need to cause more issues because if a cure comes out, we don't need people raging in the streets, breaking into hospitals, trying to steal the cure. Let the people that are in charge do what they need to do and, and let the healthcare professionals do what they know well. So give them a, give them a thank you, you know, at a girl, at a boy for doing, doing their job. My girlfriend, she's a ICU nurse and you know, the stories that I hear when she comes back is enough to say, okay, if I can't train today, that's fine. I'll sit on the couch. I'll be okay. Boredom is a, is a fine thing to have in these, these times right now. Seriously. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Hey, thanks a lot for your time. Very welcome. It's good to see you again, man. Yeah, you too.